Hey guys, Sarkat here, and today we've got another Patreon build review. This one is from our good friend Scott, a long-time supporter of the channel. And he has a Blade Blast Chieftain using totems to generate blades through Bladefall, and then manually detonate them with Blade Blast. Blade Blast is expected to be the main damage source. The gem links to the first Bladefall are what I expect to be using for Blade Blast. You should assume I'm playing SSF. I'm going Chieftain for Ez Full Fire Conversion and Beef. I've created two passive trees so far. Originally intended one to be no cluster jewels, and the other for some cluster jewels. Some fiddling changed some cluster jewels to maybe some. The major difference between them is whether I get the Sarn life wheel or not. The gear is completely uh, notional? Notional? Oh, just like, doesn't really matter. And is where I need most of the help. I'm very unfamiliar with good crafting approaches, so I'll need detailed step by step instructions on how to craft good gear. Okay, I know the signal fire is a good quiver file conversion build, at least I've heard that, and a plus skills bow is a natural complement to it. True. Thus far, this is what I want to know about getting the bow. Learn from Reddit. Uh-oh, this is a bad start. This is an example of the details I need on crafting. One, get a set of porcupine cards. He has no dex- Oh, he has actually a decent amount of dexterity. He could go for Imperial Legacy. So, porcupine cards or Imperial Legacy for a six link. Porcupine cards has a lower dex requirement, so that would work well for you. Uh, two- Alt spam to get plus one all gems. Three, regal, hope for a suffix. Four, mastercraft, plus two to support gem. Five, possible multi-mod for another mod. Right, if you're going to do the, can have three additional crafts, do three additional crafts first, then you go for plus two support. But yeah, that sounds about right. I can take something like this and create a plan. Clearly if I want the bow, I need to get porcupine cards, or to do betrayal content to get the support craft. True. Uh, if you're planning on getting that early for SSF stuff, I would recommend uh, just spamming, imprisoning, and just rushing Katarina. Don't try and set up your Syndicate board at all. Rush Katarina to get the craft. Once you've got the craft, you can then worry about Syndicate Minmax. I'd also like to use the Formless Inferno in this build. It's not something I insist on, but I think it's interesting. Okay. As for the rest of the gear, I want to make as few assumptions as possible. I kind of know the mods I want, but I'm unsure how to get those in any sort of deterministic way. I mainly put armor pieces on to get an idea of how easy I can resist more than anything else, right? Any slash all help would be greatly appreciated. Waiting for gym info to be released. We saw the gym info. It looks good. Thanks again. Hope things are going well. Thank you again, Scott. Okay, so uh, we're going to try and fix up his tree a bit. Go over his skill gems. Go over his gear. And he mostly needs help with his gear. Before we go over the tree, and I can only see a few things I would change. Uh, let's just actually look at because he's got three different trees. So this is his like no cost of tree jewel, which is like level 90. Okay. Convert it to 3.10, it doesn't actually change. It changes like two pluses over there. Okay. Uh, what was that? What was that? Okay. Uh, skill links. So, Bladefall and Weapon 1. Bladefall added fire. Okay, if you're playing SSF, you're not going to have Awakened Fire Pen. So, let's get rid of that for Fire Pen. And you're not going to have Awakened Added Fire. Because, dude. You can't, you can't be like, yo, I'm playing SSF. Two bloody Awakened Gems, by the way. Uh, that's, that's not going to happen. Uh, again, you're not going to have Awakened Spell Cascade. You just have Spell Cascade. Uh, Herald of Ash, Herald of Purity, Flesh Stone, Enlighten. Fair enough. I don't know if the Herald of Purity is... I mean, it adds a little bit of damage. I'd probably rather run something else, but if you want to run it, you want to run it fair. Uh, Flame Dash, Arcan Surge, Fast Casting. Cast damage taken, Vol Molten Shell, and Cruise Duration from Ability. I would generally rather have a defensive curse on a cast damage taken rather than an offensive curse. Also, it doesn't like you've got a Wave of Conviction. Um, so I would much rather run like a wave of conviction curse on hit flammability. So if that's weapon one. Oh, so this is meant to be his blade blast. So this is his blade blast. So that's blade blast. I'm just going to call that blade blast. That's his totems that you're just going to have to spam more. Okay. So let's say that's in his helm. That's in his gloves. That is in... So that could be floating in his chest somewhere. Unless he's planning on using a combs. He's not. And that's in his boots. Okay, so we can move some stuff around. Brilliant. 
Uh, I don't like Castle Knowledge Taken with Vol Molten Shell. I just don't like it. So, um... I would probably get rid of the Castle Knowledge Taken completely. Um, I would run a manual Vol Molten Shell. Fully leveled. With increased duration. Uh, here you could then shove a Wave of Conviction. Um, you could shove a... Steel skin. So one thing, actually, I don't actually like using normal molten shell alongside vol molten shell because it's easy to override it. So you could shove a second uh, skill, so like a steel skin that you spam, for example. Um, otherwise, you could run a second. You have enough decks that you could run a vol grace. So you could run a vol grace and a vol molten shell. Since both of them are just purely defensive, I would actually quite recommend that. You can also run like a phase run or a smoke mine or something to make yourself feel uh, faster. Since you are going to be using a bow, I'd probably run. I'd probably run a phase run or something. So let's see. Let's see. You went vol molten shell, phase run, maybe a smoke mine if you like smoke mine. Some people find it a bit clunky. Uh, maybe a vol grace if you like running vol grace. Or you could shove a arcane surge on the phase run and it would have a super long duration. Um, let's just say that you shoved. Yeah, let's just say that you shoved a, um, a Vulgarist there, okay? Uh, or you could even shove a Vol Righteous Fire for more damage, depending on if you wanted more damage. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll give you options. So, you got def you got defensive things, you got some offensive things. Good to go. Uh, so, this is just going to be floating in your body armor. You don't really need the fast casting on the Flame Dash. We would really like a wave of conviction. So we want the wave of conviction. Curse on hit. That's not what I was going to. Uh, <laughs> what am I doing? Curse. There we go. Curse on hit. Flammability. Um, again, shove an arcane surge somewhere. Could be on your movement skill. Could be somewhere else. And then shove a combustion on the. Do you have this set up correctly? Enemy is a boss. Uh, you would have taken fire damage. Uh, is ignited such burning? Yes. Ash, because you're a chieftain. Yep, that's all fair enough. Uh, you're in sand stance and fire. Cool. Right. So now that you've got the combustion there, you don't necessarily need the combustion on your main setup. Um, or you could run both just to improve the uptime or whatever, but this would let you have a new uh, setup here. Um, so you could instead, so this again, this is his Blade Blast. Um, you could run Ellie Focus, which would be Big Deeps. Um, yeah. Uh, you had a Blade Full setup. I mean, what you could actually do as well is, and this might be better, since you'll, got, you'll have two six links, is put the Blade Full Totems into your body armor in a five link or a six link then you could shove combustion on this and that would always be active and then have this in the helm so maybe swap them around so let's say we put that in the helm or wherever put that in your body armor bump shove a combustion on that and let's say you had a five link then you've got an open floating gem, which could be your flame dash. You could also shove uh, something in here. And you could shove an arcane surge on here. So that, like, yo, you press damage. You, you have, like, this is just your damage button that you're just pressing. Pressing it refreshes all your damage. If you were lucky enough to get an awakened curse on hit, you could go double curse. Or you could shove a cull on there or whatever. Um, when it comes to running totems or unleash, um, I'm not sure if totems would feel better than unleash if you're doing shenanigans with chieftain totem nodes you're not okay if you're gonna have the totem stuff i would 100 percent take this totem node because it's a huge dps thing um i wouldn't really care about this node that much it's not the best damage because you're only getting the pen from it i would much sooner take this uh because this gives you damage reduction because enemies near totems uh, deal less damage and it gives you some dps increase Whereas this is just 15% pen. I guess the chance to ignite helps your combustion, but I'd, I'd sooner go for that. Okay. Um, as for the tree, you don't need to be scaling ignite at all. Because 
Blade Blast won't have any Ignite scaling on it, so let's drop all of that stuff. Uh, let's drop all of that stuff. Um, Avatar of Fire. So where are you getting your conversion from? You're getting 50% here. And Signal Fire is your other 50, so you don't need that. Um, you're taking this whole wheel, which is a bit unnecessary. So that's not doing anything for you. That's still worth do doing because it gives you... Actually, I don't know if it's worth the two points. Is it worth the two points? 4.1. Fair enough, then. Um, right, I'd definitely be scaling AoE. I'd be getting as much AoE as possible. Make your build feel better. Do you need that, Dex? Don't ever skip two-point jewels. Uh, we could also change this routing because this is a good cluster because it gives you fizz that's extra fire. Um... Mm. You could go like that or something. Some trying to fire. Put a point there. Put points there. Uh, you could put two points there instead of having three points there. That gives you some decks. But it puts you next to another cluster jewel, so it's an option. Um, so you could do something like this. Drop that. Get your cluster jewel there. All right. Um. And if you want to run double cost, I mean, you're not going to need two cost jewels. That's just a way to do it. Uh, you could then maybe also go one, two, three. This is good because there's a fire damage bunch of AOE. So many points. Uh... I'm gonna cut a bunch of things from this. I'm 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 started to make just a cremation tree. Cremation trees so, look sort of similarish to this. Uh, right. So this is a good class. That's good because it gives you fish shit. So you don't want to drop that. Um, start of league. You want as much resist as possible. We're just gonna add a bunch of shit and we'll remove a bunch of shit. Uh, you're probably gonna be reading through this just for the uh, resist early. Um, why do you need so much decks for? I mean, we did just add a bunch of skills that require a bunch of decks. Blade 4 requires one. I didn't know Blade 4 required 155 decks. Huh. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, I felt like you could just get some dexterity on gear, though. You've put... Oh, you've put a lot of decks on gear. Okay. Okay, maybe you will actually need to take some on the tree. Uh, I mean, it's a mild DPS increase, but he doesn't really need that. He could cut it. Right, so now we want to cut, like, 20-ish points, 20, 30 points. Uh, so this is 245 life, which is a lot of life nodes. A very easy way to cut a bunch of points, like a very easy way, would just be to root along the top here and then drop all of this shit. Uh, maybe rooting back that way. Because this is meant to be like his no cluster jewel setup early. Uh, this is just my assumption. This is purely just speculation. I'm going to assume that cluster jewels are going to be accessible. I imagine you're probably going to get a couple dropping early on. But it'll probably take you quite some time. To get a full collection because they're only really in my opinion they're only really worth it if you've got like two or three to like chain right like i think they'll be really good like i think they'll be really good but i think if you've only got one good it's not worth right i think you want to save up like one two three so in that case i would pretend they don't exist until like day five six seven I think you're definitely going to run them. I think 100% you're going to want to run Cluster Jewels. I just don't think you're going to want to run them early. Um, so, yeah. So, I'd probably go for a church looks a little bit more like this. Um, the reason why I've gone for it slightly more looking like this is you could go into Duelist for more decks here. Which would be kind of nice. And more life. If you wanted. Um, I would maybe change the reading as we had it coming up this way to shove the jewel there. 
Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, if you wanted more resists, another good thing about the SOP is you could take this resist cluster. You could still take diamond skin for resists. Uh, we dropped some life regen, gained some life regen, some mana regen. Could, if you just want all the life regen, take it. I sometimes go crazy on life regen at the start of League because I know that I'm going to have to run lab a lot. So, whatever. I'd go for something which looks sort of like this. And then... For your cluster jewel setups, maybe go as I rooted along this way early on, earlier in the video. We'll definitely change these links up. Not sure about the totems. Maybe instead of totems, do like Bladefall Echo Unleash um, with Combustion on it or like Curse on Hit on that or something like. I don't know. I feel like maybe instead of totems, it would just be better off just going full utility on your Bladefalls. We don't know. But let's talk about the gear because that was the main thing that you wanted me to focus on in this video. So. Uh, just reading stuff over. So what did he again say? He wanted mostly knowing what to get for on his gear. Right. So the other good crafted mods that you could have for this uh, build, since you would um, be shoving, can have three crafts. Um, so you gave like three additional crafting modifiers, plus two... And then what else would you want to run? You can't craft spell damage on bows. Can you do like fizz as blank or something? Um, you don't need like crit multi. You could go for minion damage and take uh, spiritual aid on the tree. Sorry, spiritual command, whichever one it is. Um... Chart still double damage is good. Fire damage is extra chaos would be good. Could also go for trigger or socketed spell. Um, could be interesting. Um, if you wanted to like automate some things. I know you've got a few, you've got a few interesting options. Uh, if you want to be very lazy, you could go for car speed and chance gain arcane surge, but I don't know. One thing you could potentially do, it'd be a lot harder to craft. I'd most likely just go for like fire as extra chaos. Uh, it'd, be, it'd make it much harder to craft, though, is you could use essences. Uh, so you could use the essence of woe on two-handed weapons give spell damage. And bows are two-handed weapons. And you would have to spam them until you hit plus one and hope you had the open crafts. It's unlikely to happen, but whatever. Um, Formless Inferno is a cool helmet. Um, I think you've got better options. I'd probably just go for a rare helmet crafted with, uh, Fizz Damage Taken as Fire. It's also worth keeping in mind, um, if you were to look at PUEDB mod, the reason why rares are really good is you've got lots of random, you potentially, like, utility falling. So you could, the totem setup, if it was on a helmet, or if it, you went for an unleash setup. And a helm, um, I believe it's Shaper, gives increased AoE, which would be decent. Um, you could get Immolate from Elder Helms, you get Conquer Factor, a bit more damage. You get some flat physical to spells, flat physical to fire. Um, there's some interesting things. I would always recommend looking at PVDB for stuff like that. Like It's, it's very important to just... Have a look at this. Just go through the mods. Um, for just a generically strong body armor, uh, the incursion life with percent life is great. Uh, incursion mods did get nerfed, but they're still very strong. Um, you can also then craft percent life, percent energy shield from Jun, which would be very good. Other things you could go for, um, if you were to just quickly look see um, for. I've Hunter's got percent life, which would be pretty good. Actually, I think they only nerf percent life on rings, now I think about it. I don't think they actually nerf percent life on body armor. You could go for a uh, plus level of active gems from Shaper. Physical damage taken as elemental, if you just want to go for more, like, uh, mitigation. 
Um, Hunter's got the percent life. Uh, Crusader's got the very attractive killed enemies exploding in percent of their life as physical damage. It's very, very good. Um, yeah, so Crusader could be an end game clear speed option. If you just wanted more damage, you'd go for a Shaper Chest option. If you just want uh, as much defense as possible, you could go for um, Hunter percent life with crafted life or Incursion percent life with crafted life. So that's what I'd recommend for that slot. Uh, for Gauntlets, just as much life as possible, really. Uh, boots, uh, you'd be ideally going for a pair of Hunter Boots because on Hunter Boots, you can get Tailwind when you crit. And if you have like Unleash Bladeful setups going on and you're spamming Blade Blast, you'll be critting just naturally every now and again. Not constantly, but you'd be critting enough. Should be pretty attractive. Um, yeah. Otherwise, just going for as much movement speed and defense as possible. You didn't put any rings into the build, which is a bit funny. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what your thought process there was. Um, but yeah, ideally, you'd go for Vermilion Rings eventually. Um, just to really get that life as high as possible. And just looking for as much life on there as you can. Shove a bunch of Catalysts, which should be a lot more available this time around. And then any missing resists, Dexterity, you might need some stats. And you'll be good to go. Um, but yeah, otherwise, pretty decent first draft. Um, you can get a lot more life on a Stygian Vice, so I'd bump that up, definitely. Uh, also worth considering trying to get for reduced flask charges used. It's one of my favorite mods you can get on belts. Um, even just like increased flask life recovery rate is pretty good. Um, but I do really, really like uh, reduced flask charges used. And then you stack a bunch of uh, chemist flasks and you get more uses out of your flask, which is great. Uh, for the flasks themselves, I'd recommend for this build. Um, definitely a granite flask if you're planning on using a, um, what am I doing? I'm getting distracted. Definitely a granite flask if you're planning on using Vol Molten Shell. And you want that of Iron Skin. If I can see. There you go. Bump. And then Chemist ideally is your prefix. Um, what ores were you running again? Herald of Ash, Herald of Purity, Flesh and Stone. Uh, one thing you could do, since the Herald of Purity isn't actually giving you that much damage, is you could go for Herald of Ash, Flesh and Stone, and then like a Purity for more defense. Uh, you could go for just Purity of Elements for a bunch of all res early on. You could also go for a Skitterbots for more damage, which is what I would sooner run. Um, because then you're getting the Shock, you're getting the Chill. Leaves you a 50% mana unreserved, and if you had the level 3 Unlighten, um, then yeah. The Summon Skitterbots, yes, it re reserves an extra 10% more. Um, but it will do a lot more damage for you than the Purities. And the Chill is also very nice defense. Um, you're getting blind from the Flesh and Stone, so you don't need a Stibnite Flask. I quite like a Sulfur Flask. It's got a lot of uses, like a Sulfur or something. I like to have one Flask with a lot of uses. Um, but otherwise, Quicksilver of Movement Speed, obviously. Um... Shove that in. Again, assume chemist for all of these. And then you just need bleed removal on your life loss. And then you're going to want maybe a basalt or a. Maybe even a Jade, just to get a little bit of evasion or a Quartz. I quite value Quartz Flasks. Um, actually, what would be a really big DPS increase would be in its Xeries, since you've got the whole Fizz's Fire vibe going on. This would be a lot of damage to your build. Um, gives you a bunch of Chaos Res as well. Worth considering. But yeah, something sort of like that. Uh, for sockets, when it comes to flasks, uh, sorry, when it comes to just normal jewels, just as much life as you can get uh, as possible. So, yeah. Obviously, we don't have the proper gem info for Blade Blast, um, so it's a bit wonky. Would probably shove your blade for on an Unleash setup instead of totems, but that's personal preference. Uh, whichever it is that you prefer there. Um, if you don't use totems, I would take uh, Tahawa Forest Strength. 
uh, for the endurance charge generation instead. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go around picking up the endurance charges, but you could for just more Fismet. So, yeah, I would go for this kind of a tree. Um, for also, I'll drop those points and take that instead because it's the last point. Um, that's fine because it gives you some car speed, but you could, you could drop that for that and it's lost points. But I don't mind precision. Um, go for that sort of a tree for no Colossal Jewel. With a Colossal Jewel, root along this way, shove one in here. Or change this routing and do like that and that. And then, yeah. So you can still keep the points pretty decent. But again, I don't think Cluster Jewels are really going to be worth it until you have at least two to three good ones. But that's what I'd recommend. Thank you very much for the support, Scott, and best of luck with your league start. Appreciate it.